Today we're going to talk about the periodic table of elements. That's this guy right here. So the periodic table of elements is something that a lot of scientists work on, but this rather intense looking fellow right here, Dmitry Mendeleev, was widely credited as, uh, as finalizing as we know it. Uh, Dmitry Mendeleev was a Russian chemist, and what they basically did is they took a look at all of the elements that were out there. Now I'm going to simplify and use just a few, but they were dealing with every element that they knew. And they started off by grouping them together by how they reacted. So they knew that lithium and potassium and sodium, all of these things exploded when they were placed into water. They were highly reactive. And they knew that fluorine and bromine and chlorine, chlorine, all of these things um, formed really strong acids, hydrofluoric, hydrochloric, bromic acid. And they knew that neon, argon, and krypton, all of these elements were inert. They didn't really react with anything. So once they had them all grouped together, they started to put them in order from size. How much was the mass? What was their density? So they knew that lithium was less dense than sodium, and potassium was more dense than that. And then they did that for all of the elements, and they put them in order by size. And you can see I, I kind of arranged their mass uh, by the size of the font that I used here. So you can see lithium is smaller than fluorine, which is smaller than neon, sodium, and then chlorine and argon. And eventually, with all of the elements, they arranged them into the periodic table. So you can see that the lithium, the sodium, the potassium that they put together here are the same as we find on the periodic table. They're all in this same group. And that's how the rest of this periodic table was organized. One of the first things I want to do as we look at the periodic table is take notice of how it's organized. The periodic table goes in order of atomic number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way down. So the periodic table is ever increasing in atomic number. So it moves this way and this way and this way. And the atomic number keeps increasing, increasing. You will also notice that the mass does the same thing generally. The mass increases as you move along the periodic table. So as you move from the top left to the bottom right, the atoms are getting larger. All right, so you're getting more mass and certainly getting more protons as you move from the top left to the bottom right. One question I frequently get about the periodic table, students ask me, what's going on with these elements down here? Why is there this whole separate little island? And I can best explain that by taking a look at a map of the United States. We see a map that looks similar to this pretty often. Now, you don't really think that Alaska and Hawaii are off the coast of Texas. I hope not, anyway. But why do we put them down here? Well, we put them down here because if we were to put them where they really belonged, the map would be much larger and would be difficult to, to fit on a page. It's the exact same reason we do this. These lanthanide and actinide series should really belong right in this section here, and the whole thing should be cut and expanded apart. It should look something like this, with this lanthanide and actinide series belonging right in here. But instead, so that it fits, we put them down here. Now, truth be told, uh, we actually call these rare earth metals because they are not very common. And most of the time, unless you're doing some pretty specific branches of chemistry, they're not going to be things that you need to worry about. These elements in the first two groups are known as the representative elements. Okay, So these are the representative elements in yellow. All right, these are the ones that we're going to deal with a lot this year. All right here in the middle, in green, um, we refer to these as the transition elements. All right, these are the transition elements. All right, so these transition elements down here, um, we like to say in class that uh, these, well, these are these are high school's problem. They're kind of like teenagers. They don't follow the rules. They're uh, kind of a pain sometime when we're doing things. So when, for, the, for the purposes of what we're doing in class this year, we're not going to talk too much about the transition elements. We're going to deal mostly with the representative elements. So one of the words that you're going to hear people talk about frequently when they're talking about periodic table 
is uh, groups, families, and periods. So let's explain what those are right now. Up and down on the periodic table, we call these groups or families. Okay, so this is a group or a family. They mean the same thing, it just depends on which book uh, you might be reading from. This is a group or a family. And I like the term family because it kind of uh, works. Think about your family. You all are fairly similar. You have a lot of things in common. You may not look exactly alike, but if somebody were to meet you, there's a chance that they may be able to notice that you stand the same way or that you have the same temperament, you have the same sense of humor. Same is true here. Everything in this group or family tends to act somewhat alike, not exactly alike, and that's how the periodic table is put together. Remember, lithium, sodium, potassium, they all exploded when they were placed in water. Well, if we look at the periodic table right here, guess what's true of rubidium and cesium and francium? They also explode when they're put into water, right? So groups or families are these vertical columns. Now we also know from the video that we watched recently that the reason why they all react the same is that they have the same number of valence electrons. All right? Everything in this group or family has one valence electron. Everything in this group or family has two valence electrons. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We know that these are the noble gases they all act the same. They are very stable. They don't want any more electrons, so they all uh, are inert. They act the same. Okay, so these right here going left to right, we refer to these as periods. Okay, so left to right, these are periods. The way I like to remember that is that a period um, in English I write a sentence and I end it with a period. Sentences go left to right and they end with a period. So these are periods, these are groups. As I move from the top to the bottom of a group, the atomic number gets bigger and the mass gets bigger. As I move from left to right in a period, the atomic number gets bigger and the mass gets bigger. In summary, the periodic table was originally arranged by Dmitri Mendeleev. He placed elements that reacted similarly into groups. The periodic table is placed in order by atomic number. Elements increase in mass and atomic number. They basically get bigger as you move to the right and down on the periodic table. The elements in groups 1 and 2 and 13 through 18 are known as the representative elements. The elements in groups 3 through 12 are known as the transition elements. Elements in the same up and down group are said to be in the same group or family. Elements in the same group or family behave and react the same because they have the same number of valence or electrons. Elements in the same side to side row are said to be in the same period.